So, welcome everybody to this new session of the Cinema Seminar course. Um, today we are pleased to have with us Joel Boss. We already have a professor in the Department of Engineering in Asaya, Universidad de Monduy, Barcelona. And today he's going to talk us about acoustic black holes in mechanics. I'm sure it will be a very interesting topic. So, Joel, and for you. So thank you very much, Ignacio. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, to, this, uh, to give this talk. And uh, yes, today is about acoustic black holes in, in mechanics. And uh, what I've done is to organize this, this talk into four or five main sections. The first one is uh, just an introduction. What is a black hole in astrophysics? And what do we understand by, by an acoustic black holes in, in mechanics? Then we will see uh, how we can exploit ABH acoustic black holes uh, to reduce vibration in structures. We will see if they are also useful or not uh, to reduce uh, noise emission from vibrating uh, structures. And then uh, we will have a, um, uh, a look or uh, yeah, a short look at, at some other uh, topics involving uh, black holes, uh, like energy harvesting, wave manipulation, or the kind of things that you can usually only do uh, by resorting to metal materials. And we will make a, a final observation about the connection between mechanics and astrophysics, if there is such a connection or not. And we will finish with the ongoing research on this topic. So, okay, let's start from the very first beginning. And our starting point to understand what is a black hole are uh, Einstein's uh, equation of general relativity. Uh, you just, uh, we don't need to understand what's in these equations. Just uh, have the idea that on the right hand side, you have what is called the energy momentum tensor. That would be, for instance, a star, that you have it in the picture on the, on the left of the slide. And the, the left hand side of this equation, it is a second order nonlinear differential equation uh, for the metric of the space time. So it tells you how this star will distort, will curve the space time around it. And once you know uh, which is this curvature, uh, you will see how particles can move in space. And this is why, for instance, um, a particle having no mass, like a photon, uh, will uh, perceive or experience gravity, while this is not possible in, in Newton's uh, gravity law. And, um, okay, that's the, the idea on these equations. And uh, the, you can think of it as if, if you take a basketball and just put it into onto a blanket, the blanket will curve. So that's the same idea, but with space-time in, in, instead of space of just space. So the first solution to, to the Einstein's general uh, relativity equations were due to uh, Schwarzschild. And um, the metric that uh, he obtained from Schwarzschild solution, you usually uh, write it in, in the compact form by resorting to the differential line element, which is called a differential interval here because it relates the distance between two points in space time. Okay, so it's the same idea that you could use uh, uh, to compute the, the distance between two points in a curvature phase. And if we have a, a look at this, this uh, line element, we have okay, the, the angular dependence, but what is more interesting, interesting are the, the other two terms. And we can observe here that we have uh, two singularities in this, in this metric. The first one uh, takes place when the radial uh, direction is, is zero, and this one is unavoidable at the center of the, of the start equation just blow up. And the other one is, takes place at what is called uh, R uh, sub S, which is uh, uh, the Schwarzschild radius. Okay, and the Schwarzschild radius, this distance, is what is known as the event horizon of a black hole. So the idea behind this is that if you take a mass uh, of a star and put all the mass inside this radius, then you get a black hole. And every object or everything that passes the horizon event is doomed. It can no longer escape from it. And for you to have an idea, for instance, if the whole sun was reduced to a sphere of uh, having a three kilometer radius, the sun would become a black hole. If we take planet Earth and reduce it to a more or less uh, a tennis ball, then the Earth would become a black hole. Okay. 
And uh, well, maybe you are familiar with this uh, picture from uh, 2019. It was the first picture of a of a, a real black hole. What we are seeing here is is the accretion disk is matter falling inside the, the black hole, and it corresponds to the supermassive black holes at the center of the N87 galaxy, which have seven billion times the mass of the sun. And now there exist different types of black holes, but the first one. Uh, the first predicted one uh, were due to the collapse of large neutron stars. Okay, so at the very beginning, uh, black holes were known as totally collapsed uh, neutron stars, and obviously nobody would know about them if that was the the name that 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 was kept. But the physicist uh, uh, called Wheeler uh, he just proposed the term black hole for it, which is a catchy name. In, um, and almost everybody now has, has heard about black holes. So, okay, that's a black hole in astrophysics in two minutes. And let's see what are black holes in mechanics. Uh, in fact, acoustic black holes in mechanics is, is also a catchy name uh, to account for some curious wave phenomena that can remind somehow of, of astrophysical black holes. And there are two types of, of ABH, uh, those dealing with waves propagating in beams, plates, and, and cells, and in structures in general, and those dealing with acoustic waves uh, propagating, for instance, in dark terminations. Now, the first type uh, of black holes, the original ones, were proposed uh, in the late 80s by, by a Russian physicist or engineer, I don't know. Um, and his idea was, okay, this is, if we have the, the termination of, of a, a beam, and instead of having a, a straight termination, what I do is uh, to tailor a, a power law profile, okay? So the thing is, the mean is according to this power law profile. And he showed that if this is the case, the, the speed of the propagating uh, wave and, and, and the phase speed and also the group speed will tend to zero. The wavelength of, the, of this wave uh, will diminish and the amplitude will grow. And actually, uh, you can compute it and it will take an infinite amount of time for the wave to reach the tip of the ABH. Okay? So there can be no reflection from such a diminution and this is well, why now it's called a black hole. But uh, Mironov noticed, uh, noticed himself that in, in practice, obviously it's impossible to have a zero uh, uh, thickness at the end of, of any uh, realistic structure. And if you just uh, put a, a truncation thickness there, you can have up to 80% of reflection. So that doesn't turn to be very useful. And um, in fact, uh, Mironov's uh, work remained of unnoticed, unnoticed sorry, for many years. On still in, until in 2004, okay, Krilov and Tillman came up with a very simple idea. If it turns out that the wave gets trapped and the amplitude grows at the tip of the, of the black hole, just put a damping layer there and try to dissipate it. Okay, so we now here have this H0, which is the truncation thickness. And from that moment, uh, the, there's been the the, the topic of, of, of black holes uh, became uh, quite popular and there's, there's been uh, a large amount of work on it. So I show here on, on the left uh, hand some pictures of, of uh, real uh, black holes, uh, termination. On, on the top you have from a uniform team from this ISVR video, the different type of black holes. And on the top you have a, a black hole with some damping uh, material. And here uh, uh, we made a, a finite element uh, animation of how a black, uh, uh, an acoustic black hole for a beam works. We have on the bottom a uniform beam, on the center, on the center an ABH uh, beam with damping, and on the top an, an ABH beam with no damping. So I would like you to focus on what happens at the tip. And when we've got this excitation, uh, it will start now again, okay? Now for the uniform beam, the wave propagates at, at the same speed, okay? And it gets uh, reflected at the end and comes back. What, uh, while if you see what happens with the ABH, you will see that, as, as we mentioned before, the wave starts to slow down, uh, the wavelength diminishes and the amplitude grows. And now if you look at the, at the region between the external line excitation and the entrance of the ABH, one, we've got the reflections, 
you will see that we have almost the same level of uh, vibration for the uniform uh, uh, beam through all the through all the, the beam, while uh, for the ABH plus damping, there's almost no vibration here. But you have some uh, reflected waves uh, if you put no damping on the ABH, okay? And so, uh, well, uh, uh, I mean, the setting ABH on a boundary, it's interesting, but it's of no useful if, if you plan to, to uh, use them for more complex structures, so it, people come soon with the idea of embedding black holes on, on plate and surface instead of uh, placing them at the, at the boundary. And here you have the most, the most typical uh, embedded black holes, which are circular black holes, okay? And they have also a parallel profile uh, to the center. In the right one has, has a hole in the middle and the other one has just a truncation to this. Now, the other type of, of black holes, and I'm just gonna uh, show you two slides on, on this topic in these presentations, uh, are intended for uh, ABH dark termination. So the, the idea is here we have a dark, we have an insulin uh, acoustic wave, and if we place a set of concentric rings uh, whose radius also decreases following a, a power law, what we get is that this acoustic wave will get uh, trapped here, and if we put some absorption material, there will be no, almost no reflection uh, back. And the idea was also uh, proposed by uh, Mironov in the, uh, 2002, but it has been until uh, this uh, recent for uh, past uh, four or five years that, that the topic has has become of, of interest again. And here you have again on the left uh, two pictures of uh, an acoustic black hole for the termination. The first one is uh, uh, made of uh, metal. I don't know which one. And the one in the top and in, on the bottom is, is just a three D printed ABH, so we can uh, use much more rings that on the other case. And here we have uh, again a finite element animation of a of a pulse propagating in a in a in a duct. So. When the pulse enters the ABH, okay, we have some reflection, but most of the acoustic pressure gets trapped inside the inside the, the termination. So well, that's that's the introduction. What is an astrophysical black hole? What do we understand by acoustic black holes in structures and ducts? And now uh, let us see if they, they we can use it for, for some uh, useful applications. And the first one is to try to reduce vibration in, in structures. Now, given that we are thinner, we, we, we shall talk a little bit about the numerical methods that are used to, uh, to simulate the behavior of these black holes. And uh, let us mention that for one-dimensional systems like beams and docks, a very uh, uh, precise and fast option is the use of the transfer matrix method. But as long as you turn to 2D or 3D systems, uh, like the case of ABH uh, embedded on beams and plates, uh, the finite element method is, is, is commonly used, and this is uh, combined with the boundary element method if we want to compute also the, the radiated sound. But there's a problem with, with, uh, with the finite element method and, and, and black holes, and is that because the wavelength uh, gets very short at the, uh, close to the center of the ABH, and the truncation thickness is very small, uh, usually you, you require quite uh, a large and, and find meshes in order to, to simulate the performance of, of the ABH. So there, there has been many, many researchers has, has uh, tried to, to work on different approaches, uh, for, uh, for instance, using the, the riley witz method and using different type of, of basis functions. Uh, trigonometric functions are, are not really good for that, but wavelets uh, work uh, very good. And in our case, in many of our works, we have employed Gaussian uh, functions as the basis functions, and we refer to the, to the method as uh, for brevity as the gem, the Gaussian expansion method. And the, the idea is, is no, but just, just um, uh, we make a review, we take the displacement field of a structure, U and V are the in plane mo uh, motion, W is the out of plane motion. What we do is to expand this uh, displacement, displacement in terms of uh, uh, time dependent uh, coefficients. And, uh, and the basis functions depending on x and y. And we build these basis functions uh, by means of uh, 
some functions, some Gaussian functions that only depend on x and y. So we get a set of, uh, of Gaussians on the x and y direction having some uh, uh, scaling and translation parameters. So we can build a, a basis of this type. Okay, here we have one of the basis functions. We can translate it and know that the, the axis here has different uh, magnitude. And this function is sharper and, and has a larger peak than the other ones. And next we proceed as usual. As usual, we build the Lagrangian of the system. Uh, we compute the kinetic energy and express it uh, and express the displacement in terms of the of the Gaussian expansion. We do the same for the potential energy. We do the same uh, for the external work. And sorry, we apply the Euler Lagrange equations and we get the equations of motion for that system. Okay, and we can obviously that this is just an example. We can modify this. Uh, this Lagrangian uh, to account for, for instance, to include the damping layer, uh, to change the boundary conditions, uh, put some uh, rotational or translational spins on it, uh, to account for piezoelectric uh, patches in the case we want to, to harvest energy, and so on. And okay, yeah, some, some details on how, how the gem works can, can be found in these works. Okay, and, and now that uh, we have explained the method. Here we have some modes, uh, some arbitrary chosen modes for an ABH plate contain, containing three ABH of different size and, uh, and uh, the analogous for an ABH beam. And as, as you can see, uh, what happens for most modes is that the uh, vibration concentrates at the center of the ABH. Okay, here in the right, the shaded areas correspond to the ABH regions, and you can see how the vibration is very strong there. So now that we know how to uh, uh, compute uh, the vibration field of, of an ABH, let's talk a little bit uh, how to use um, on how to use them and how to characterize them. Now to date, uh, the basic uh, ABH designs uh, for boundaries are the conventional one uh, that we have just seen. Uh, has also been proposed to use an, an spiral ABH in order to have a much much longer one, but that doesn't occupy many uh, a strong length. And we have, for instance, also a circular ABH beams. And as, regal, as regards uh, embedded ABHs, the most uh, popular one is the, the circular ABH, but uh, there are work, works also on a rectangular ABH. And uh, a especially interesting one is, is the double lip ABH. In this case, what we do is we insert the two ABHs, two opposite ABHs inside the plate, so you still have a, a flat surface for that plate. And recently, we have also proposed different uh, designs of ABHs, uh, for instance, ring ABHs uh, to avoid uh, transmission from a point excitation to the remaining of a plate. Uh, we've seen what happens if you embed ABH on a, on a circular beam. And we have also proposed uh, angular ABH for cylindrical cells. Uh, so uh, the idea is to, to reduce vibration on structures. And we may wonder how ABH can help on that. And we have already seen uh, the answer to that question. Uh, the point is that waves get trapped inside the ABH region, and there the energy can become, uh, can be dissipated by means of a viscoelastic wave. And we may wonder if, okay, if that would work for low frequencies, and the answer is that obviously not. We have two limitations. Okay, the first one is that, uh, of course, if you want uh, the ABH to, to be effective, its diameter has to be much larger than the wavelength that we want to uh, to dissipate. So this poses a first cotton frequency uh, below which the ABH doesn't work. But we have another condition, and this is dictated by the smoothness parameter of the ABH. Okay, if that, uh, for instance, if that uh, power law instead of M was, uh, let's say, 100, this would be almost like a, like a flag wall. So uh, most of the incident wave uh, would be reflected. So the ABH has to be uh, smooth enough in order uh, uh, for the um, 
for the wave to experience a, a, a proper impedance uh, matching. Okay, so we have a second a second frequency, uh, which is larger than, than the other one. And actually, the the ABH would start working for frequency between these two ones, but it becomes really, really, really effective uh, for frequencies that are higher than three times the smoothness frequency. This is where the ABH works. And here we have uh, an example. One usual way to characterize uh, an ABH is by uh, plotting the the ratio gamma, which is the uh, ratio between the mean square velocity at the ABH region uh, and the uh, screaming velocity at the uniform portion of the of the structure. Okay, so if most of the energy concentrates inside the ABH, gamma should be larger than, than zero. Okay, if there is no difference between the, the mean square velocity at the ABH and at the uniform region, this would be zero. Right, because uh, we we have a logarithm here, and you can see here we have uh, three different ABHs of, of different sizes, and uh, uh, as you can, uh, we have plot three times the smoothness frequency, and you can see that really the the, the ABH become effective once past this three times the the smoothness frequency. And the problem here is that okay, if you just half the radius of an ABH let's say from this one to this one, the point is that the cut-on frequency gets multiplied by four. So uh, when you reduce the size of, of an AVH, uh, you have to be very careful because uh, it will only work at very high frequencies. Now, here I will, I, I have shown you some animations and, and here I will show you an, an experiment uh, results made by uh, some some colleagues uh, in, in France, uh, Adrien Pellat and François Gautier, who recently made a, a review on acoustic black holes in the Journal of Sound and Vibration. And as a supplement, supplementary material, they just uh, put these, uh, these uh, animations. And here uh, you have a, a, an ABH profile of a beam, and they have used a, a laser vibrometer to, to measure the, the vibrations on that on that beam. And on the left, you have an excitation for frequency that's uh, below the cut-on frequency of the ABH. And on the left, you have uh, an excitation uh, for frequency that's, um, that's greater, uh, bigger than the, the cut-on frequency of the ABH. And you get the following results. So if the frequency is lower than the cut-on frequency, the ABH doesn't work. So you have a stationary wave here. But if you excite the AVH for a frequency uh, that is higher than the cut-on frequency, then you have a propagative wave here. You have no reflection from the AVH terminus. Okay? And they make a, a similar uh, measurement uh, for circular AVH in the case of having some damping in it and, and in the case of having no damping. And as you can see from this video, they have do an impact and the wave get trapped inside the AVH, and in the case you put some, some damping, they get strongly dissipated. So outside the AVH region, if you have damping, you have very low vibration field. So this is essentially how it works. Now let's say we, we, you can consider uh, different or more types of AVHs. Uh, this is work we did uh, with uh, proposing a ring AVH. So we have uh, one of the problems here, okay, we have this annular uh, ring ABH. One of the problem is of ABH is that the rigidity of the structure is, is, is very weakened. So uh, we include here the case of, of um, we include here some stiffness to, to try to avoid, that, to avoid that problem. And we also compare the results with a, a, a collection of standard uh, circle rings. And what you get, in this case, we were not interested in the gamma ratio, but in the transmission between the, the vibration at the excitation area and at the remaining of the structure. So in this picture, you have this transmission depending on frequency, and we can see uh, that the, the annular IDH is the red uh, curve. So uh, once past the, once past the, the smooth, the, the smooth, sorry, the smoothness frequency, uh, it becomes very effective, okay? 
And even if you put some stiffness, which is the, the red curve as compared to the to the uniform plate, which is the PERM1, one, uh, the AV8 is, is, is very effective in, in isolating this uh, vibration transmission. What happens before the smoothness frequency, this is, cannot be attributed to the AV8 effect, but to the model uh, behavior of, of the plate. Okay, for instance, the, the structure is more weak uh, less now, so that the peaks will usually be lower than those of the uniform, of the uniform plate and, and so on. And here you have an animation on the bottom. You have uh, an excitation of a uniform plate. We have uh, on the left side an annular ABH, but with no damping, and on the right side an annular ABH with damping. And you can observe that uh, in the region outside the ABH, the level of vibration in this case is much lower than for the uniform plate and for the annular ABH with no damping. Okay, so that's an effective way to uh, reduce vibrations on beams. And then we can move to uh, more, com more complex uh, cases. For instance, uh, there are many structures in the naval and aerospatial, uh, aerospatial uh, sector which involve uh, cylindrical shells. And we may wonder if it's useful to uh, um, embed a uh, nanoware ABH on, on such cylinders and compare to what will happen with just a uniform uh, cylindrical cell. And uh, yeah, just to uncomment that uh, in order to simulate this, this case, we have to uh, impose the continuity in the circumferential direction of displacement angle and, and moment. And this means that we have to change the, the Gaussian basis in order to comply uh, with that. And uh, it turns out that this is not uh, very difficult and it's, it, it's much easier with Gaussian functions than uh, with wavelets, for instance. And here I, I have plot some, some results. In this case, okay, we have on the vertical axis mean square velocity in the first, in the first uh, um, plot. Uh, we have compared the prone curve is for just the uniform cylindrical shell and the, the red one is for the ABH. And here we have compared the mean square uh, vibration at the uniform region. Now, the region, this means that, of course, if uh, most vibration uh, is trapped inside the ABH. In the uniform region, the ABH structure must have less uh, uh, vibration than the uniform one. This is what we observe. On the contrary, if we compare the mean square value at the ABH region and the equivalent portion of the uniform beam, we observe that the vibration is much stronger for the ABH than for the uniform beam. And if we compare the gamma ratio, we, we can see that this is really effective. Okay. Now, for the case, this case, uh, this dashed uh, vertical uh, line uh, uh, corresponds to 250 hertz, which is the frequency with the AVH starts uh, really functioning well. But if we compute three times the smoothness frequency of this AVH, it turns out that it's only uh, 50 um, Hertz. So what, what is going on here? Uh, we would expect the ABAs to function uh, in the case of a plate uh, once we, we surpass uh, 5 kHz. And the issue here is that basically at these frequencies, uh, the motion of the, of the cylindrical cell is dominated by the circumferential modes of the, of the cell instead of the flexural modes. Okay, and this annular ABH will work well for flexural wave and not for waves in the uh, circumferential direction. And we can observe this here. For instance, you make this point excitation and see what which is the response at 120 hertz. This is really basically uh, uh, corresponds to a circumferential mode. While if we increase the, the frequency, the the vibration of the of the cylindrical cell is dominated by flexural uh, uh, motion and the ABH becomes very effective here. Almost no vibration is transmitted to the other side of the of the ABH. Okay? These two circles uh, denote the, the the limits of the ABH region. 
Another interesting thing is that uh, to consider what happens uh, with uh, periodic uh, structures, for instance, the case of uh, periodic uh, cylindrical cells, which are also very uh, uh, common in, in naval and aerospace structures. So here what we have is a, is, is a unit cell, okay, for, um, for uh, an infinite cylindrical cell, and we have the uniform case and a case with damping and we have a, a simply supported uh, condition. So this is repeated to infinity. Now, if we impose these periodic conditions here, we are left with, with a, an eigenvalue problem for the novel the displacements at the unit cell uh, left side, for instance. You can choose how to do that. And this, uh, well, and this, as we will see, will, will give place to a certain uh, uh, dispersion course. Uh, before that, let's say that uh, we have, uh, for instance, in this case, we have used uh, the finite element method, not, not the gen, to make the simulations. And we also build this model uh, with just 10, uh, uh, 10 ABHs that correspond to 10 unit cells in order to see how vibration is transmitted from one ring to a receiver one. Okay, and this is what we get. Now, for, for the uniform beam and for uh, uh, all periodic structures, what you get is that if you plot the, the dispersion curve of frequency against wave, wave number, you get some stop bands at which uh, waves cannot propagate. Okay, uh, for these uh, frequencies in the shaded areas, no wave propagate, while in the, in the, the other areas corresponding to these four curves, the past ones, you can have uh, a strong wave propagation, okay? And if, uh, if you just have a, a look at the transmittability between uh, the ring where uh, we are exciting uh, the cell and the, and the ring uh, at the end of the cell, what you get is this type of, of, uh, of uh, of figure in the horizontal axis, we have the transmissibility. The higher it is, the higher vibration is uh, transmitted, and on the vertical axis, you have the frequency. So you can see that in the past bands, there's a lot of vibration, while in the stop bands, almost uh, there's almost no no, paper, no vibration at all. And uh, uh, an interesting thing here is that. If you put some damping on the uniform cell, you just get some very uh, little effect. Okay, you reduce the peaks, but you have uh, not really good uh, improvement. Now, if we do that for for the for the uh, cylindrical cell with uh, ABH, the first thing we can notice is that obviously the the pass bands and stop bands will change because we have removed uh, mass from the cell and we have changed its uh, rigidity. And uh, for instance, the second pass one has almost disappeared. And if we plot the, if we plot the transmissibility in the case of uh, no damping, which is the, the brown curve, and in the case of damping, uh, we have a tremendous uh, reduction in the transmissibility thanks to the ABH effect. And, and this is what you can show in this uh, top figure. Okay, almost no, uh, we are citing this at, I'm sorry, at six, uh, uh, 650 hertz, which is in this past one, and almost no vibration is transmitted, while in the same case for the uniform plate, we have a lot of transmission there. Okay. So, okay, uh, we have now an, an idea on, on how we can use uh, ABH to reduce uh, vibrations. And now we will have a, a look at what happens with, with noise radiation. Now, uh, what we have now, we have some parts of the structure that has uh, a lot of vibration inside the ABH, and we have some parts of the structure with much less vibration, the region outside the ABH, and how does this will, will, uh, will reflect on, on the noise created? We will have the same amount of noise, less noise, or, or much more noise. Now to see that, let's, let me connect to this uh, ICR video and just listen to it. I mean, for the vibrations, we have seen animations, we have seen uh, experiments with the laser vibrometer, and let's see what happens uh, if we excite an, an, an ABH with noise. On the left hand side, you have a uniform uh, beam, and on the right hand side, you have an ABH beam with the same amount of tapping. 
So have two aluminium beams, one without an acoustic black hole and one with. We have a thin layer of damping material like blue tack stuck to each, which absorbs vibrations. You can hear the effect of the acoustic black hole as the straight beam brings out the bell, whilst the acoustic black hole sounds more like the dull bird. Can you think of a situation where an acoustic black hole could be used? So that's the point. As, as, as you listen to it, what, what does the ABH is it totally absorbs the high frequency content of the of the of the beam vibration. Okay, and, and let, let's try to, to understand how this works. And for uh, those of you that uh, uh, who are not familiar with, with acoustic, let me in briefly introduce the concept of, of radiation efficiency, which is a way to characterize how a vibrating uh, surface. Uh, can generate uh, sound. So the, the radiation efficiency is defined as the sound power level of the vibration plate divided by the sound power level of a piston that moves, so just say of a rigid plate that moves with the same velocity as the mean square velocity of the plate. So you have a plate, you compute the mean square velocity, and then you, you just consider that you have a rigid plate that is moving up and down with that frequency. Okay, you make uh, uh, the ratio, the ratio, and this is the radiation efficiency of the plate. Now, something very <coughs> sorry, something curious ha happens here, and we know that the, the 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 speed of the bending waves on a on a plate uh, uh, depends on the square root of the frequency. So this means that for low frequency, the the propagating speed of these waves will be smaller than the sound speed in air. And we usually refer uh, to them as subsonic waves, okay, related uh, to the sound speed in air. And at high frequency, we'll have that the propagation speed of these, um, these waves is larger than the speed of sound. And so we will refer to them as supersonic waves. And in this case, as, as we are considering the fixed frequency, we'll have the wavelength of the, of the wave in the plate will be larger than the wave of the acoustic wave it's generated. Okay, so uh, the acoustic waves are emitted in a, in a certain direction. Now, uh, from this plot, from this plot, you can easily see that the sine of, of this angle theta it equals the uh, ratio of the two wavelengths, the acoustic one and the bending wave one, and this must be smaller than one. And this means that if the the bending uh, uh, I'm sorry that if the yeah if the bending wave propagating in this uh, infinite plate is subsonic, it can uh, it's it's not possible for it to emit any sound, okay? Because this should be larger than one, right? Now uh, the the frequency at which the the speed of the of the wave uh, equals uh, uh, the speed of sound is what is called the critical or coincidence frequency. Okay, and it depends and it has an inverse dependence on the thickness of, of the plate. So if you plot the radiation efficiency, you get a plot like, like this one on the top. For subsonic, uh, below the critical frequency, you have almost no uh, radiation efficiency. It grows when you reach this frequency and then it goes to one. Okay, what happens uh, if the, if the, um, if the bending wave uh, is subsonic. The point is that, okay, the plate is moving in this way and it's too small. Simply, it's like when I'm waving my hand, if I go slowly, uh, the air on one side of my hand pass to the other side. I, I cannot generate any acoustic wave. So this is what's happening here, essentially. Now, if you want to see how uh, a black hole can, can influence uh, Sound radiation. Uh, th there's a uh, very interesting work by Ma and Chang, and they did that for plate. And here uh, you have uh, a picture of what it's called the supersonic intensity on the surface of the plate. And on the first row, they excited the plate with a frequency that is smaller than the critical frequency. Okay, and we we we, we say that okay, if there's no ABH, there should be no radiation from that from that plate. 
But this is the case of an infinite plate, okay? But if we have a, a, a finite plate, okay, uh, a finite plate essentially will, will radiate noise uh, at the boundaries because at the boundaries there, there's no compensation. I mean, in the middle of the plate for every dip, there's a, a peak to compensate that, okay? But in a finite plate, this is not possible. And what will happen with uh, the ABH plate? Well, the point here is that we just, we don't have just one critical frequency because the thing is changing. So we have many of them. So as long as this wave enters the ABH, its corresponding critical frequency at a given thickness will depart, will be far away from the critical frequency of the uniform plate. So the ABH region will be a very, very poor radiator for sun. So this region will almost emit no sound. And what happens if we emit at a frequency that it's higher than the, the critical frequency of the uniform plate? Well, here, uh, as, as we can see, the plate is, is, is emitting uh, a large amount of, of noise. And uh, what happens for the, um, for the ABH case here is that when the wave enters the, the ABH, at some point, its frequency will match the critical frequency. We have, so we have a transonic boundary. And inside this boundary, the critical frequency corresponding to the small things of the ABH will be smaller than the critical frequency of the plate. And again, we will have no noise generated inside the ABH. So if we see the, the effect on the radiation efficiency, uh, on the top we have that of a uniform plate. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, the, the low curve is that of a uniform plate. And um, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not saying it right. The one on the top is that of a uniform plate. Uh, and the one on the bottom is that of the plate with an ABH. So we have a strong reduction in the radiation efficiency. And uh, similar things, of course, for instance, if, if uh, you test the case of a cylindrical cell and you plot the radiation efficiency here, uh, the situation is, is more complex because the the radiation efficiency for cylindrical cells, depending on, on if it's an acoustic thick cell or thin cell, they are quite, uh, they have a universal behavior or not. But in general, you have a strong reduction of the, of the, um, of the radiation efficiency. And then, okay, once you know the, the vibration of the, of the surface of the cell or the surface of the plate, you can uh, use the green function approach to compute the, the sound pressure at the far field. And here you have some uh, two uh, figures for the case of a cylindrical cell. The first one corresponds to the sound power, power level uh, versus frequency. The brown curve is for the uniform uh, cell and the red one is for the cell with an annular ABH. And we can observe in this zoom of the region that we have a strong uh, reduction in the sound power level of the, of the plate. And also if we compute the sound, for instance, at a distance of 10 meters from, from that cell, we also observe that the, uh, with the ABH, we get a, a lot of uh, sound pressure level uh, reduction. Okay. So, okay, that's, these are the, the, the most typical uh, cases of, of ABH applications, vibration reduction, noise reduction, but there's a lot of uh, funny things that one can do uh, uh, with ABHs. And uh, so first one, uh, it's okay, we've been dealing with beams, uh, plates and cells, and uh, let's go to uh, somehow more complex uh, systems. And uh, here we may wonder if a plate with embedded uh, ABHs can reduce the transmission loss between uh, two uh, rooms, okay? And uh, this case was uh, addressed by uh, Furtado and Conlon, and they make some experiments and also some simulations using simplified models with uh, the finite element method combined with uh, boundary element method. And uh, here on the center, you have the uh, measured transmission loss. The transmission loss between two rooms, it's, 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 uh, um, it essentially tells you which is the difference in acoustic energy between one room and the other. So how efficient is the wall the separating wall to to um, yeah to, to avoid uh, noise transmission, and what you observe here is that okay, if we know that plates radiate a lot of sound at the critical frequency, it means that the transmission loss will have a big dip at the transmission frequency. 
it will not be able to um, avoid sound transmission at that frequency. Now, uh, here you have, uh, for instance, in, if, if we have a look at the, the, the central picture, the blue line corresponds to the transmission loss, uh, depending on frequency, of the uniform plate. So at the critical frequency of the plate, we have a strong dip. But if we embed several ABHs on the plate, we don't have this dip, okay, for the reasons we, we mentioned before. So that's a, 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 a great potential use for, for that plate. Uh, uh, here, for instance, in, in, in this work, we, we perform an analysis by using a, a statistical metal, methods instead of of deterministic ones. So uh, essentially what is done here is to stab, uh, establish uh, uh, some power balance relations between the modes, the modes inside the cavity and the modes on the plate. And you can compute the transmission loss uh, per octave bands instead of uh, the specific frequencies in this case. And as you can see from, from this picture, which is the energy noise reduction, which is directly proportional, proportional to the transmission loss, we see that either using circular or annular ABH, we can avoid the problem at the critical frequency. But we have a problem that maybe was not clear in the other picture, is that we have less uh, transmission loss at lower frequencies. And this is because ABH remove mass from, from the plate. So uh, 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 we are currently in, in other groups investigation how we could manage okay, to, to build an ABH plate that also has uh, uh, good behavior at low frequency and avoids the problem of the critical frequency. So what else, for instance, in terms of industry, uh, uh, well, in, in 2014, uh, Bowyer and, and Krilov did uh, study the, the possibility of uh, just tailoring uh, the end, uh, the trailing edge of an airfoil with an ABH profile. Okay, and uh, obviously this has the problem that it, it changes the, the, the fluid motion, so the aerodynamics of the plate, but they manage by uh, including some damping layers uh, uh, to get close, that's literally to get close to the, to the original uh, performance of the ABH. And maybe more, more, more interesting in a very recent work of 2021, uh, some authors uh, uh, analyzed the possibility of embedding uh, ABHs inside um, an airfoil, okay? And, and they make several uh, CFD computations for the couplet problem to see how this ABH affects the vibration of, of the foil and how this in terms of the aerodynamics of the, of the, of the SNACA airfoils. Okay, so that's an, an, an interesting uh, topic to explore. But we have uh, uh, several things. Uh, for instance, another another option, an another option to uh, for ABHs is that of energy harvesting. Uh, so we're saying, okay, uh, with ABHs you get a lot of vibration at the at the center of the ABH or at the tip of the ABH. So why instead of dissipating this uh, energy, don't we convert it into uh, electric energy? Okay, uh, so this could be a means for energy harvesting. And, and this uh, first idea come from the works of Zao Conlon and, and Semperlotti, and there has not, not been much, much work on this topic yet. In 2019, uh, the group led by Chang, uh, they make experiments and some uh, theoretical simulations for this double leaf ABH with piezoelectric patches in order to, to harvest energy. And recently, we also uh, proposed an, an ABH piezoelectric uh, beam of cantilever, okay, and, and we make a, a comparison of the energy harvesting efficiency with that of an ABH and with that of a uniform uh, cantilever with uh, piezoelectric patches. And as you can see, the, the, the ABH clear, clearly outperforms the uniform beam, except for at very high frequencies. So what's going on at very high frequencies uh, is what we have here. Uh, we, here we have the, the, the displacement field of the, of the beam, okay? Uh, the green area is the, where the piezoelectric patch is placed. Uh, the gray area is where we have the, um, 
the, um, sorry, the, the, the ABH. And if the frequency is not very high, we just have a maximum inside the piezoelectric patch. But if the frequency is very high, then we may have maximums and minimums inside the, the patch. And so they compensate each other, and this is not effective for harvesting energy. But there's a, an easy trick uh, to solve that problem, and is to divide the aviators in several, uh, uh, the piezoelectric patch, sorry, in several patches that are connected one to another. And here you can see that the difference in energy harvesting, if we have changed the, the, the logarithmic, logarithmic scale of, of the plot to better see this effect. And we see how for higher frequencies, if we use five aviators instead of one, the energy harvesting efficient uh, gets, uh, uh, well, it's, it's gets very increased. Another thing that you can do with aviators, uh, they have some uh, amazing properties that you can uh, only usually uh, get uh, uh, using multiphase emitter materials. And is that by analyzing the dispersion curve and the acute frequency contours, you can you can find frequencies at which, uh, mostly in the in the ultrasonic range, where some uh, strange uh, uh, things happens for wave propagation. For instance, you can use uh, these arrays of AVH, and if you excite at this point at 43 kilohertz, you get the collimation of the waves. So here you have. Uh, um, circular wave propagating on the on the plate and once they cross the ABH array you have collimation or you can use that ABH also uh, for focusing energy at the point or you can get some uh, strange thing as uh, B refraction you have, can have negative refraction which is not possible with standard materials uh, you can have uh, only negative refraction, or you can have B refraction positive and, and negative uh, B refraction. And uh, uh, we also did some tests on that. And for instance, if you just make a row of ABH, you can get a strong collimation as compared to a uniform plate. You can uh, make a, a, a just use a, a, a curved uh, array, okay, and you can deflect that. Uh, that strong wave, uh, collimated wave, or even you can uh, attempt to, to go for some double curvature for this for this beam. Or you can also play with other configurations in order to focus energy at the point. And for instance, here you could put a, a piezoelectric pad in order to harvest energy. Okay. And some other things that are done with ABHs is, uh, for instance, you can use electrical ABHs as lenses also for focusing. Or at certain frequencies, you can build shielding areas. Okay, so uh, a point, uh, I mean, if you place an object here and you have this uh, plate vibration, there will, there will be no, uh, this will be not be noticed but by an object placed at the center. And so uh, we are about to, uh, to finish. And uh, uh, okay, we've seen that uh, term acoustic black hole was uh, catching name in astrophysics. It is also a catchy name uh, for uh, this phenomenon. We have just an uh, overview in, in mechanics, but we may wonder if there's a, a real connection between an, uh, an, an astrophysical black hole and with a mechanical uh, signal. And this is the case, and actually it, it was, it was uh, first proposed in the, in the early 80s by, by a physicist called uh, Unruh. And uh, he showed that uh, if you get uh, uh, the Schwarzschild solution we've seen at the very beginning of the presentation of Einstein's equations, and now you can consider the, the, the following uh, the, the following um, uh, problem, and is that we have okay uh, flow propagating at subsonic uh, velocity that goes to uh, uh, what is called a Laval nozzle, okay, uh, and at this throat um, the velocity will become. Uh, supersonic, and we have a supersonic region here. So it can be proved that the uh, acoustic perturbation that propagate here, once they cross this this line, is like crossing an horizontal event. They cannot propagate upwards. So the equations that these uh, uh, acoustic uh, waves fulfill uh, are the, the same. Or, or they, they let's say they, they move as if 
the way of doing so in a curved surface that it's the same that's partial formed for astrophysical black holes. Okay. And there's been other 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 examples, for instance, more, more recently, more recently uh, Oregon and, and colleagues, they propose, okay, having here a straight duct with a flow and a compliant wall, such that it, sl it slows down the, the acoustic uh, um, the speed of sound in the flow. So at some point, this uh, will also, uh, this, uh, um, acoustic perturbations will become supersonic and then you have also the same effect as, as that of a, an astrophysical black hole. But it's to say that all these mechanic analogies, they have a big problem, is that uh, in flows, as, as you all know, uh, we have a problem of turbulence, so they are not very useful to, to make uh, astrophysical investigation. But several people are, are using uh, what are called uh, Bose-Einstein condensa condensates with the same idea, and what they are doing is that there's a whole branch of general relativity, which is called analog gravity, and they have to that they intend to uh, detect and measure things like uh, Hawking's uh, radiation in black holes by using uh, experimental tests that fulfill the same equations that black holes in general relativity. So. Uh, here we go to the end of the presentation. Uh, just uh, a few words about ongoing research. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, current, uh, current work, work on, on optimization methods uh, for black holes. Uh, people are using machine learning techniques, topology, uh, topological optimization, and so on, in order to find uh, um, better uh, profiles uh, to distribute the dumping, dumping patches at, at, at proper sites, and, and so on. Uh, there's also a lot of investigation uh, to try to improve the performance of uh, ABHs at low frequencies. Uh, for instance, uh, some people are, are trying to explore nonlinear effects to make a transfer of energy from low frequencies to high frequencies. Uh, there's the uh, option to combine uh, ABH with uh, metamaterial. Um, and also people are exploiting on non lock and response of, of structures to, to that goal. And in what concerns industrial applications, it is true that ABHs are still at a very initial uh, research uh, stage. Okay, they have the advantage of of uh, uh, having light mass, but the disadvantage of, of a weak structural rigidity. So uh, uh, people are trying to so are exploring now uh, if ABHs could be useful for for several industrial problems. And then uh, an another very interesting uh, area of research is that on how to manufacture ABHs, have uh, three, uh, three printing approaches, tailoring, uh, jittering. So in order to move ABHs, uh, let's say from university to industry, uh, we need that uh, uh, these, uh, the manufacturing of these ABHs uh, become cheap, okay? Because otherwise they cannot compete with the standard method, even they perform better. So that's all I wanted to explain to you. And thank you very much for your attention. And if there's any questions, I will be glad to answer. Thank so thank you very you. much. Uh, we have a very nice talk. Um, we have time for a couple or one or two, or two short questions, maybe, if anybody wants. Well, I have oh, at least one curiosity. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about the, the fact that the ABH works in a range of frequencies. So my question is, do you design ABH for every piece that you are going to use? I mean, do you, do you take this plate, for instance, of a certain material, and then you characterize this plate, its references, and then you design the ABH for a plate, or you can, can you generalize the ABH for many different materials at the same time? No, it depends. You know, so you have a plate and you want uh, uh, to absorb uh, uh, um, vibrations at a given frequency range, so you know that uh, which is the size of the ABH you have to place on it, and its uh, shape, its smoothness parameter, in order to get that uh, that option. If it's very, if you want to observe at the very high frequencies, then you know that uh, uh, with a, a small ABHs that will work. But as you go to to lower frequencies, you need large ABHs to do that. Uh, thank you.
Okay. Yes, I have another question. So, uh, I'm uh, studying the flex electric effect, uh, and one of these applications it is a similar effect to the piezoelectric effect, which yeah. is only relevant at the micro scale or or some micron scales, nano scale. So my question is whether there is some some works uh, um, of these uh, acoustic black holes for energy harvesting for uh, microscopic or nanoscopic devices. So maybe not working on piezo electricity, but based on other physics that are um, relevant at the micro scale. I'm I'm not aware of that, honestly. There exist a, a very few works on on ABH uh, on, on on energy harvesting using ABH. And uh, I would say that uh, four or five uh, papers at most, because it's very recent. So I, I, uh, I think that this is uh, the state of the of the art, and people have not gone further than that. So it's an interesting issue if you want to <laughs> to address it. Right, it just uh, cuts my attention, right? And then I have a second question, if I have uh, some more time. So at some point you mentioned that. Uh, uh, Gaussian basis functions were uh, more useful in this particular case rather than standard finite element basis functions. And I, I wonder why, uh, what's the specific reason? I have heard that in some uh, acoustic problems uh, for some particular uh, quantities of interest, you want to measure uh, the nice property of, of Gaussian basis functions or B-spin basis functions is that they are smooth whereas the finite element basis functions do not maintain the, the smoothness the, of, the, of the basis. So is, that this, is there this, this reason there, or there are some other reasons? Yes, uh, actually, uh, if I have to be honest, at the very beginning was OK. Uh, people are working with wavelets, and uh, Gaussians are easy to, to implement. Like, let's, let's try what happened with them. And they give uh, pretty uh, good results. And when we go for, for later work and, and, and try um, and need to adapt the, the, the Gaussian basis in order to fulfill continuity conditions and uh, periodic uh, conditions and so on, it turns out that it was uh, much easier to adapt with Gaussians than with uh, wavelets, for instance. For wavelets, you, you need some iterative and very time-consuming uh, processes. And in, with Gaussians, we, we find a way to to get that new basis functions in a in a quite straightforward uh, manner right i guess that that's also applicable to to bisplane basis functions i mean i have some experience with with bisplane basis functions and for instance applying periodic boundary conditions there is really easy ah, so with that's all that techniques fine. it's okay i'm sorry i, I didn't get you yeah yes I, I guess that you can also use this, uh, this splines at least uh, uh, in, in ABH uh, literature, uh, uh, you will find some initial attempts with trigonometric functions, but these uh, th th they converge very, very bad. So most work are with wavelets and, and Gaussians, and but splines could be an, an option too, of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, if there are no more questions, then I think we can close the seminar here. Thank you again, Muriel, for the seminar and the lecture was very interesting. And see you all in the next session of the seminar, seminar course. See you. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. bye.